Hello and welcome everyone to this Q&A with Course Coordinator. This uh, event is part of the Scientix STEM Out of the Box MOOC, a STEM approach to non-STEM subjects. My name is Miriam and together with my colleague Elena, we would like to thank you for joining us. We're coordinating this course uh, hosted in the uh, European Schoolnet Academy and we're very happy to see so many of you. Um, and we're also uh, very pleased because we are joined by Nicoletta, who is the course coordinator and one of the Scientix ambassadors in Romania. Welcome, Nicoletta, and uh, please, the floor is yours. So hello, everyone. As you have already seen from the Facebook group, my name is Nicoletta Livia Barbu. I've been teaching since 2002, so that is 19 years now, for 19, since I was 19. Sorry for that. I, I'm, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> okay, so I've been teaching as a primary school teacher, as a preschool teacher, and also as an English language teacher. I am a Scientix ambassador since 2020. I'm also a training ambassador for Romania since 2021. I'm also a member of the Career Advisors Network, that is the STEMIT project from, from Scientix. I have also worked for the Romanian Ministry of Education as an operational expert and a teacher trainer. And I'm also part of EduVital NGO and I'm working there as a project officer. When it comes to STEM in my teaching and my learning process, I say there is a passion for that because I have um, dedicated a lot of hours to read, to get to know what STEM is, because I think I have done STEM, STEM activities in my classroom, but I didn't know there that were STEM activities. So in 2010-21, one of my uh, uh, learning scenario up in the air, which I wrote with another uh, colleague of mine, Elena Corina Rogovana, was the winner of the STEM discovery campaign in 2021. So therefore, I became a member of the Career Advisor Network. I also uh, collaborated with other Scientix ambassadors for the handbook for the Career Advisors. I was a pilot teacher for the first time the course was uh, online on the platform, STEM out of the box. I also reviewed and edited some of the best learning scenario that were um, <clears throat> uh, submitted during the course. In last year, I participated in SPA 40 in Brussels because uh, uh, a story of implementation I wrote, <clears throat> which contains STEM activities uh, in my class with my students. Uh, was one of the winners of the uh, STEM campaign last year. And I also worked as a project coordinator last year for STEM Motion in Motion for Change we, within the STEM Partnerships Education Resilience in Europe. So that's about it. <laughs> Thank you, Miriam and the Alana. Thanks a lot, Nicole. I'm stuck. I will stop sharing. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It's really our pleasure that uh, uh, that you are joining us joining us today as the um, as uh, the moderator of uh, this course and also that uh, you can represent uh, early childhood education uh, so well, of course. Um. So let us go back and. Um, in this uh, live event, uh, you will be able to ask us uh, questions about the course and we will also uh, we will be answering them. Uh, but we are going to start by giving an overview of how the MOOC works and answer um, already those questions that some of you uh, posted on the Padlet, uh, which is available at the end of Model 1. Now, before we get into the content, I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. Just make sure that your sound is turned on so you are able to effectively hear us. And we would like to remind you that during this session, your cameras and microphones are off. So if you have any questions, you are invited to uh, write them here in the chat and we will answer them. So let's um, have a look at how the course is divided. As you uh, probably know already, uh, with this course, you will learn how to integrate STEM 
that stands for science, technology, engineering and mathematics in your uh, non-STEM lessons. So think about humanities, arts, literature, management, anything that comes to mind and uh, not really STEM. Um, so you are able to help your students develop uh, within this approach a more deep scientific um, mathematic and problem solving skills. So in this course, you will explore STEM classroom activities and ideas that will guide you through um, uh, STEM lesson plans that were created and tested by teachers, and one of them being Nicoletta, as she was explaining before. You will also access resources um, and challenges to increase uh, your students' knowledge and skills for the future. Now, the course is divided in four modules, as you can see. And this week, the first model, Introduction to STEM for the Future, is already available. So every week, a new module starts. So next week, you will have access to Module 2, where you will explore innovative pedagogies for STEM teaching. And the next one, um, on the 11th of March, the third module will open, and you will have access to STEM skills and higher order thinking. And last but not least, on the 18th of March, um, um, design learning scenarios will open, um, so you will be able to know how to do this effectively uh, to engage your students. But later, Yelena will be um, giving you more details on how to submit your learning scenario. Now, the course is accessed um, openly via the, the web at your own convenience. There are no live lectures, but there will be three optional live events. So today, we have the first one, this Q&A with course coordinators. Next week, uh, we will have a webinar with experts on the topic of uh, outdoor learning. And finally, um, we will have during Module 4 um, a very exciting Teach Meet. However, the recording of all three live events will be available after um, in the course, in the live section events. Um, so you can watch them at your own time, so you don't need to attend live necessarily. And uh, of course, you can follow the course at your own pace at any time. As I said, we will open one model um, per week. So at the beginning of each week, you will have access to um, one new model for four uh, weeks. So um, 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 there are only a few deadlines that you need to pay attention to. And Elena will give you more information on this. Please, Elena, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Miriam, um, and thanks everyone for sharing where they are joining from. You can see so many different countries, Italy, Romania, Croatia, Serbia. So uh, just name the few, but uh, feel free to uh, ask any questions that you might have about the course and it will be our pleasure to answer Portugal as well. Hello. So um, let's uh, go back to uh, the course content and activities. I'm sure that uh, many of you have already started module one and you can see what to expect, but just in case I will all go over what kind of uh, activities you might expect from this course and some others on the European School Net Academy. You have probably noticed that we have featured some high content, uh, high quality uh, content uh, in form of text and video, as well as learning scenarios, uh, thanks to our lovely pilot teachers and Citex ambassadors. Uh, at the end of each module, you have probably noticed that there is a designated section about uh, how to fill in a Scientix uh, learning scenario template. You will only have to uh, include, you only have to submit your learning scenario template, well, actually your learning scenario in module four, but it's a good idea to start thinking about it already starting from module one. And we hope that you get inspired by some of the examples that are features throughout the course. Um, of course, in uh, our courses, we really aim to uh, engage with the community of teachers and um, we trust that you all come with a very valuable resources, knowledge and experiences. So uh, we do really appreciate you contributing to the course content by engaging through uh, course uh, padlets, forums, as well as um, course Facebook group. So we invite you to make sure that you participate in the course reflection and discussion 
Um, it's all, of course good for your own practice to uh, practice some self-reflection. Additionally, by sharing uh, some good ideas, we can all support and help each other. Um, of course, you will find um, different resources and tools that we suggest uh, to use in your uh, classroom to support STEM teaching. Uh, Miriam introduced already live uh, events, so we will have three in this course. Uh, we hope to see you there for all three. And we also hope to see you uh, apply to present during our Teach Meet. For those of you who are not aware, Teach Meet is an online event in which we um, invite uh, participants from the course to be speaker for the day. So if you already have some interesting ideas or if you have already experience in introducing STEM activities uh, in your classroom, we encourage you to apply to be speakers. You can share different uh, tools, maybe present some of your activities. If you wish to apply to be the speaker, one of the speakers, please um, fill, um, fill out the form that you can find in the uh, live events section of the course. Uh, so we hope to see you there, both as speakers, as uh, participants as well. Um, and lastly, in order to um, receive a course certificate, uh, we ask you to submit your learning scenario as well as to uh, peer review at least three learning scenarios of other participants. I'm going to uh, show you briefly now how to um, uh, how to do so. So once we get to module four, so don't worry right now, we only ask you to explore the learning scenario template. We also share the rubric uh, in module one. Please do have a look already. Um, based on the rubric, you will know kind of what are expectations from you, how you should fill in learning scenario template. But once we get to module four, you will see this um, interface on the platform and we will ask you to upload your learning scenario template. So make sure that you designate, designate a bit of time at the end of each module to fill in different sections and to uh, work on it that way. It will be easier. You will be ready once we start module four. In case uh, you are joining us later in the course or um, for whatever reason you were not able to do so throughout the course, don't worry. We also have additional week and a half at the end of module four for you to finalize your learning scenario as well as to offer some peer reviews. So here are uh, instructions on how to um, uh, upload your learning scenario. Of course, these instructions will be available in module four. Once we uh, open module four and open uh, the peer assessment activity, uh, but the slides of this presentation will be shared with you in next days uh, in the live event section in case you already want to check out how to go about it. Um, a very important part of uh, peer assessment activity, of course, is the actual feedback. So um, one part, step one, is submitting your learning scenario. But please don't forget that providing a, um, providing a constructive feedback to your peers is equally important. We are all here to learn and grow in our uh, teaching practice. So, um, if we receive a feedback like, thank you, congratulations, even though it's nice, it's not very useful for our practice. So um, make sure that you allow for enough time to go through your learning, to your peers' learning scenarios. So remember that they also put a lot of time in creating these learning scenarios. So they deserve that we also take enough time to carefully read through them and offer some valuable feedback. If you're not sure how to go about it, uh, also in module four, we will discuss more about how to provide uh, written feedback, uh, constructive written feedback, uh, give you some examples. And we also have an optional activity, which is um, a practice peer review in which you will get to practice how to uh, give uh, constructive feedback and you will receive some uh, guidelines from us on that. Uh, lastly, once you uh, successfully finish your STEM uh, scientific uh, learning scenario, uh, submitted it on the platform and peer review uh, at least three other learning scenario, 
you will then receive a course certificate and digital badges. Uh, you can always check on your progress in the progress tab, as you can see it here on the slide. Um, you can see how much of the actual course content you have visited, but uh, please pay attention because these um, pie charts that represent how much of uh, course content you visited is not representative of the grade that you need. To receive the course certificate, you need to submit and receive a passing grade from your peers in the peer assessment activity. You will see that we have a few other activities that are graded. They uh, account for about 5% of the uh, total grade. Uh, so they are not a requisite for certificate, but uh, it's just uh, small activities to test uh, your knowledge a little bit and to help you further engage with the course content. Um, but uh, of course, the learning scenario together with the peer assessment are what counts for the course certificate. I hope everything is clear so far. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat um, and I will be happy to address them uh, in a bit. But for now, I'll let Miriam uh, go into more details about uh, Scientix learning scenario. Great. Thanks, uh, thanks Elena. Um, so um, you can download the learning scenario template from the course in the course handouts, as uh, Elena was explaining before. And we invite you to fill in, uh, to fill in it uh, step by step. So at the end of every module, you will find some instructions to create your learning scenario. And of course, you will also find in every module um, examples of learning scenarios created and tested by teachers. So I won't be going through every single section of the learning scenario unless someone has a question, then I will go back to it. Um, it's, it's in the slides, but I would like to focus on a specific part of the learning scenario, which might be a little bit more uh, new or challenging uh, for, for some of you. So I would like to explain more in detail this section, which is the STEM criteria section of your learning scenario. Now, a STEM school is defined uh, as a school with a clear STEM strategy. So Scientix has developed the STEM school level criteria and has identified key areas that can help schools advance and have a clear, uh, a clear strategy uh, towards STEM education. So in particular, these are um, seven elements and in every module of the course, you will also be guided to filling in this table step by step again with examples. Now it might be perhaps not possible for you to fill in all the criteria yet, and that is OK. Um, we just need to ensure that by the end of the course, we fill in at least two criteria per element, especially because you will be um, creating a learning scenario that emphasizes STEM. Um, so perhaps let's have a look at one of these seven elements. So this is an example. We have chosen the element connection. And in this case, we were able to fill in um, five of the criteria. Now, this is an example from a learning scenario uh, for early childhood education, and the topic is learning about the wind. Um, so how does this uh, learning scenario have a connection with industry? What has industry to do with uh, very young learners and, and, and the wind? Well, in this case, we chose to invite, for example, a meteorologist, um, either physically or um, virtually to the classroom, so students could discuss um, about wind energy. Another example could be uh, we are inviting parents uh, to help us um, conduct an outdoor um, activity in school. So this is some of the ways that um, you might be able to uh, find uh, connections with some people working outside of school, with co local communities, with universities or research centers. Um, and like I mentioned before, you might not be able to fill in all the criteria, but we encourage you to reflect on each of the elements every week where you, when you are going through the course and see how you can integrate more of STEM in your classroom. So the idea that you should think is, how is my learning scenario supporting the STEM criteria of my school? Because it could be that you think, oh, but my school is not really um, pursuing a STEM direction. We don't do a lot of STEM, 
but if you reflect on it, it might be that, oh, you, you are already uh, working with personalized learning. Or it could be that you are using inquiry-based uh, learning in your school. So this is the way that uh, your learning scenario, your teaching could support um, the STEM um, uh, path of your school. So um, if you have any questions, as Elena said, we'll be very happy to, to address them. Uh, also, if it's not about the STEM criteria, but any other part of your learning scenario, please feel free and we can go in detail into that. Now, we also have the pleasure today to uh, share this Q&A with the coordinator of the STEM Discovery Campaign 2024. We have mentioned the STEM Discovery Campaign here and there. Uh, also, Nicoleta uh, was talking about it before. So perhaps, Isidora, um, you can enlighten us more about what this STEM uh, Discovery Campaign is. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Miriam, for having me here tonight. And thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Um, if you are familiar with Scientix, uh, then you're definitely familiar with STEM Discovery Campaign. Uh, it's an international in joint initiative uh, this year co-organized by Scientix and LifeTever project. And um, it is focused on, it, it is inviting all teachers, schools, educators, everyone working in uh, science education to uh, organize, conduct, implement, take part in uh, different STEM related activities. And these activities uh, uh, can be from webinars like this. So you can pin on the STEM discovery campaign map that you took a part in this uh, amazing Q&A webinar or any other webinar regarding STEM education, or if you conducted a small activity about different some topics with your students or if you're even uh, taking part in the MOOC you can all as well let us know about that um, and any other different activity that are STEM related you can definitely share with us on the STEM discovery campaign map and become eligible for one of the STEM discovery uh, Scientix awards uh, currently we have four, 13 Scientix awards that you can find on Scientix website STEM discovery campaign website uh, that you can find either in the chat or here if you click on the link uh, on the slide uh, different awards um, are Kind of we're searching for different uh, things for different awards so to make your submission more uh, fitting for different awards to, you can check the description of each award and see where your learning scenarios where your activity fit the best and this year we have really amazing awards from coming to brussels to different uh, materials uh, provided by different projects and different partners so uh, i think there is uh, a lot of a lot of different opportunities aside from our awards we also have different events organized either by scientists or with different partners. So you can also go to STEM Discovery Campaign events calendar and see uh, we have upcoming uh, SPA with you for Ocean, uh, different webinars uh, with um, SDC experts, uh, a SPA with SDC experts that is starting on the 5th of March. Then you can go ahead on also the Scientix website and uh, subscribe for and learn more how to uh, participate most effectively in the STEM discovery campaign, how to shape your activities and how to maximize the use of what you create, uh, both from STEM, for the STEM discovery campaign, but how to maximize it for your school, how to bring innovation in your school and maybe share experience with uh, your uh, peers. Um, I would not take more of your time, so if you have any questions related to STEM discovery campaign, feel free. I'm here. Feel free to uh, ask in the chat and Miriam, I uh, give the floor back to you. Many thanks, Isidora. Super exciting uh, STEM discovery campaign already running. All right, um, so now it's your moment. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel uh, free to uh, post them in the chat and we will answer them. And we will also be addressing some of the questions that we found on the Padlet. Um, so perhaps we can start if I look at the chat. Um, one question is, I haven't understood the connection between our scenario, our learning scenario and the STEM school label. 
Should we propose ways in which our school can implement STEM or is our scenario not eligible if our school does not fit the criteria? So um, your learning scenario, regardless if you are filling in the criteria or not, is eligible. It has to do more with the um, if the activities are age appropriate, if you are implementing STEM in a general way, if you didn't manage to fill in all the criteria, that's OK. So the learning scenario uh, should be supporting the STEM criteria in a way. So let's think that we have an activity uh, where you are. When you have your students uh, research about the topic, they have to collaborate and they have to come up with um, their own solutions to a certain problem. This is part of the STEM criteria. So if you already design this activity, you go to the um, STEM criteria table and you say, oh, we are using problem based learning, for example. Then you can fill in uh, this, the students are using problem based learning, using um, this activity and you explain a little bit. So. Um, you should always start by first the activities of your learning scenario and see if something uh, fits in the STEM criteria. But if you are not able to fill in the table completely, that has nothing to do with your learning scenario um, being um, um, eligible or not. I hope this clarifies uh, your question. Perhaps um, if we don't see, I don't see any other Ah, there's also another question. Can we have the presentation? Yes, you will uh, have access to the presentation uh, in the live event section of the course. Uh, you will you will have access to the slides. Feel free to. Uh, I think we have another question now. Um, I think this might be related to the STEM discovery campaign for Isidora. Uh, so uh, Isidora, the question is, I have uploaded a lot of STEM events and, and certificates of the participation in STEM courses, but I cannot see all of them in the map. I don't know why. Uh, so, ah, OK. Hi, Anna. Uh, well, actually, I was approving uh, your uh, certificates today, uh, depending on when the certificates, well, when the, the course took place, depends whether or not your activity will be approved. So in case of, a, uh, sorry, to be eligible to submit anything for the STEM discovery campaign, the activity needs to take place from uh, 1st of May 2023 until 30th of April 2024. And if your activity, in, meaning you took the course in the time where it was 2023, stand the score campaign, so in February 2023, then unfortunately we will not approve that activity considering that it could have been a part of last year's campaign. All the activities that took place, um, can other people hear me? Yes, very well. Yes, okay. we can hear you. Um, OK, so. OK, uh, so either way, so if your activity took place before 1st of May, unfortunately, it won't appear on the map. But if it took place after the 1st of May 2023 until the end of the campaign, which is 30th of April 2024, then all the activities should be approved, provided that you, of course, include uh, sufficient information regarding uh, your activity. Um, if this is the case, Anna, we can you can send us an email and we can check what is uh, the problem. Maybe there is some technical issue that we could address. So please feel free to to send the email to Scientix and we will um, and and we will try to figure it out. Be sh be aware that all the submissions that come. Uh, activities need to be reviewed and approved by a third person, meaning either I or someone else from the Scientix team. So be also um, patient because we will get back to you um, as soon as we, 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 you will see your activity on the map as soon as we approve it. But sometimes we get a lot of uh, submissions, so we need to go through all of it. Indeed. Uh, excellent. Thank you, Sidora. While we have you here, 
quickly another question uh, in the Padlet that, that uh, relates to the competition. So they are asking if they can, uh, could it be the same? Uh, so the, in the final scenario we are submitting, could it be the same we are implementing and submitting for the competition or should it be something different, shorter, a draft or a uh, outline, for example? I'm just gonna briefly touch upon the criteria for the course and then you can elaborate for the competition. Okay. So as we discussed uh, throughout this um, Q&A for the final course activity, you have to um, submit the uh, Scientix uh, learning scenario that uh, we presented. So you have to use the template that is in the course. You have to fill in all the sections of the template and uh, submit it um, in the platform. As for the activity, uh, so I guess, yeah, it can be uh, many different things. Isidora can maybe elaborate on that. So when it comes to what you can submit to the STEM discovery campaign, you can submit either your template, fielding template from uh, UN Academy, or uh, or you can, f for the, the purpose of the STEM discovery campaign, you can just uh, write a description of your learning scenario and just provide a link to it in the description of the activity. When it comes to the activities itself, it's really up to your imagination. Everything STEM related, integrated STEM, um steam everything that is on your mind whatever you whatever your topic is we will gladly have it uh, featured and share it of course it needs to be related to science education but uh, other than that we have no criteria when it comes to the activity because what your i mean as long as it's valuable for students is valuable for, for us i would say so almost the sky is the limit. Thanks a lot, Isidora. <laughs> um, we have one uh, question in the Padlet. Uh, maybe Nicoletta, uh, you might be able to, to take this one. Um, so we have someone asking, are there documents or examples of STEM applications for kindergarten in the course? Yes, thank you, Miriam. I was reading this question earlier. And as well as documents, uh, I'm thinking about learning scenarios and the, the best learning scenarios and the um, best resources I have used until now are from the Scientix repository. There are a lot of uh, activities described, but there, um, the resources are also available. All the offline and the, the online resources that were used uh, in the activities. Uh, the materials, there are also annexes to the learning scenarios that uh, all teachers can use. The learning scenarios are for preschool, but also for primary, secondary schools. <clears throat> so I think you can find there a lot of inspirations for your STEM activities, for integrated STEM teaching in preschool, because I know in preschool we teach integrated activities and um, I don't know about other documents. Uh, another thought I had was the um, document from uh, the integrated STEM uh, teaching for, uh, released by European Schoolnet, I think two years ago, if I'm right. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a um, clear document explaining how to integrate the STEM into your lessons and activities. And I think it's good to know how to integrate STEM. Maybe it's not easy for everyone to integrate STEM, but uh, when you actually start teaching using STEM and integrate into non-STEM subjects, it comes easier. I think, I, I hope I was clear. <laughs> On, on the question. Yes, thank you, Nicoletta. Indeed, um, in each of uh, in uh, three modules out of four, you will find examples of uh, STEM activities for uh, early childhood education, so kindergarten or pre-primary, uh, primary as well as secondary school. So make sure that you visit those sections in addition to the uh, learning scenario 
So you will also find video testimonials from the teachers, creators of this learning scenario in which they reflect a little bit on implementation, share uh, some um, impressions from their students uh, and give you some tips on how to uh, implement uh, STEM in your classes. Uh, we also have some uh, space there for reflection. So feel free to share your thoughts and inspire each other. I'm sure that you will find some uh, useful um, inspiration amongst the posts and comments of uh, each participant. In particularly in module one, please visit section 1.3. This is where we have the learning scenario uh, examples, including Nicoletta's. Uh, all right, um, we will uh, maybe answer a few more questions we received uh, through Padlet. We have a question about um, uh, if they have already implemented STEM activity, if they can use that for the scenario or the activity needs to be implementing during the duration of the course. Uh, no, it's not necessary to have uh, to implement your STEM activity during the course. It could have been activity that you have done previously with your students, or it could be activity that you are planning to do in the future. So uh, we do have some uh, sections in the template about implementation and feedback, uh, post implementation feedback, but it could be also that you are thinking more uh, in the planning stages. So it is uh, not necessary to um have already implemented or to implement it necessarily during the course um i hope that answers that question uh, we also had a question about challenges of uh, implementing um uh, stem activities and uh, is it feasible to organize these type of activities and how frequent i have to say this question really um yeah, made me think. Uh, definitely the frequency of STEM activities will really depend on the context of your school uh, and also resources that you have available at your disposal. Um, it can also depend how much uh, students are interested in also pursuing these activities. So there is really not a single um, answer to fit all. I would say best would be to review maybe your curriculum at the beginning of each year and see uh, in uh, maybe which area you can introduce uh, STEM activities. As you can see through many examples in the MOOC, uh, those can, um, you can introduce them through some activities that maybe seemingly don't, seem, don't seem to be related to STEM, but you can definitely uh, use them to nurture uh, different uh, skills within your students uh, that are uh, in support of STEM education and STEM professions. So uh, as frequent as possible, I would say, but it will all depend on your context and your uh, resources available. I don't know if Nicolette and Miriam have anything else to add to this. No, don't seem they do or all right yeah go ahead no i actually wanted to hear from nicoletta because um well nicoletta you've been creating many many great uh, learning scenarios where you uh, implement STEM in such a nice way especially for the younger ones because sometimes Anna was saying in the chat that the spirit of you know STEM really starts uh, as early as possible I fully agree with her but I wanted to hear perhaps from you what's your experience uh, with with the younger learners I agree with uh, what Ilana said earlier it depends on the resources because for example for the learning scenario uh, that is in the course from Shadow to Light. I had to create the mirror boxes because I didn't have mirror boxes in my classroom. So when I designed the learning scenario, I thought I need to do this. My children, my students haven't worked with this kind of, uh, I don't know, instruments, tools and they need to understand better how the light reflects and deflects in the mirrors and i went to the carpenter for example and at first he didn't understand what i wanted but he designed them so well so yes it, it depends on the resources because you, if you want to have an attractive lesson with your students you need to have attractive uh, resources so 
that's my point. Yeah, and I think behind all the resources and the effort, it's uh, the willing to to do something extra, like you were saying, they need to do this. Uh, so that's that's lovely to hear. Thanks a lot, Nicoleta. Thank you. Indeed, and I think you will find that uh, students tend to respond very positively when introduced to this type of activities. So it's also maybe just trying it out a bit and see how it goes, and maybe that will give you a push to give to explore further. Uh, different options and how to incorporate them. We had a question about implementing STEM in uh, language uh, subjects, uh, in particular uh, for English. So um, one participant wrote that she understands that language is used as a media for communication and collaboration. And in the video about the food, the teacher dealt with some facts about food through the use of biology. Is that all about STEM for a teacher of English? Just wondering. Well, I have to say that um, even in that example about food, uh, I think it's very clear that STEM is used for much more than just a means of communication and collaboration. Of course, as a language uh, teacher, you will definitely use vocabulary accessible to you to um, of course, teach the language, but if you pay attention closely to that learning scenario, you will notice that there are um, uh, sections in which students had to do some statistical um, research, so to collect answers about uh, uh, food uh, habits. Uh, they had to also learn how to group different things, so um, there were uh, different mathematical uh, aspects uh, to this um, learning scenario. They also use different ICT tools, so I would say that definitely when incorporating STEM, not just in uh, language subject, but in other non-STEM subjects, you can always uh, use different um, um, uh, activities, uh, for example, uh, statistical or uh, doing some uh, form of research, which is always usually associated with uh, science, um, can be a useful way to engage your uh, students. Um, anybody else would like to contribute to this question or? Uh, yeah, I would say stay tuned for uh, uh, learning scenarios in the modules two and three. You will there find even more ideas in how to incorporate them in your lessons. Um, uh, okay, I think maybe we have time for one last question. Uh, if you have, I don't see any questions in the chat. I hope that uh, everything is clear so far. If you have some last questions for us, feel free to post them in the chat. Um, if not, Miriam, we can maybe address one last question mm -hmm. that was uh, about uh, artificial intelligence and uh, STEM. I have to say this is a very hot topic right now, the use of artificial intelligence. I'm afraid that the question doesn't really, um, it's not very precise in a way. So the question is, says, I want to know if there is, there is or not a relationship between AI and STEM, and if so, how can AI be implemented in STEM? So I'm not sure if the question is related to STEM teaching, STEM subjects. Is it for students to use artificial intelligence tools or for teachers to use artificial intelligence tool, or if STEM has anything to do with AI? I think we will all agree that absolutely, if there was no STEM, there would be no artificial intelligence. So uh, I will then focus maybe this, my answer on some tools for teachers to use in the classroom to uh, support them in their STEM journey. Um, definitely, um, uh, we can uh, use uh, different artificial intelligence tools to support our STEM integration. Uh, we discussed that a little bit in uh, modules to come, especially when it comes to gamification. Uh, we introduced some tools, so I say stay tuned and come back in uh, modules two and three to learn uh, more about those tools. Um, Miriam, do you have any thoughts on this? 
No, but I'm actually really curious when we get to that part of the course to see if there are any ideas, if someone is already, you know, implementing uh, this type of tools uh, in, in their teaching, uh, see how it's it's do, uh, it's done in secondary, primary, and even with the, with the younger ones, how do you see it uh, working in the classroom? So indeed, staying tuned. Definitely. I mean, uh, using artificial intelligence tools can definitely support teachers to do more personalized uh, content. It can help you with gradings. It all depends uh, what uh, is your school policy on using these tools. Of course, we are now uh, entering uh, this uh, still new to us field and we have to um, also um, be careful about how we use many of these tools. So it will depend on your school policy, but if you have tools available to you, they can be used uh, to uh, support you in creation of uh, lessons. For example, if you're not so familiar and don't know how to start by uh, using uh, different chatbots, they, you can brainstorm some ideas on how to uh, start using STEM in for languages, for example. Um, then uh, you can uh, use it for um, uh, to support personal learning through, for example, use of these games or even to help you in grading assignments. But again, uh, please make sure you consult with your school uh, management on the policies of use of that tool. As you can know, they can sometimes collect um, some uh, privacy information and we want to stay safe and we want to make sure that our students information is also safe. So definitely can be useful, but um, uh, be careful how you approach it. All right, uh, I think that is uh, all the questions we had. I see some other questions coming in related to um, languages. Uh, Feel free to have a look uh, at the learning scenario examples in module one. Uh, in particular, uh, I think it was um, on the food. I forgot now what was the name exactly. So that one is related to learning languages and, uh, uh, and STEM. Um, and uh, we already touched upon that. So by using a cross-curricular approach there, uh, using different um, methods of investigation, uh, research, and so on. Um, I think that we can um, say goodbye uh, here. Thank you all for joining. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can also post them in a course a Facebook group, as well as in the course a forum. Nicoletta will be there to uh, uh, answer any of the questions you might have, and so do and Miriam and I as well. Um, thank you all, and uh, have a lovely evening or day, depending where you are in the world. And we hope to see you during webinar next week. And please don't forget to apply uh, to be presenter for the day, to see you in our Teach Meet. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely evening uh, or whatever you are, and thank you uh, for joining us. And many thank thanks you. also to Isidora and Nicolette. Thank you and very to much as well. Diego, who was behind the scenes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.